my dear brothers and sisters in the risen Lord, his love is everlasting. Rarely does the responsorial psalm from any Mass summarize the theme of the liturgy as appropriately as it does on this, the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. The risen Christ is full of mercy and compassion for the people that he has redeemed by his blood. On that first Easter morn, the risen Christ, the Lord, showed himself not only fully, of, fully alive, but full of the mercy that he bears for all those that he has redeemed, especially for us whose sins were the source of his suffering. We should all be quite thankful that God's mercy is nothing like our own mercy. None of us can claim to be all that merciful in the first place. But so often, when we do manage to forgive another person, we also remember the offense. Our forgiveness is so often conditioned by the recollection of the harm that has been done to us, the slight that we might have endured. We grant pardon to others while clinging to the hurt that we may have undergone. God's mercy endures forever, far outlasting and more importantly, completely replacing the offense that we have offered. It is important that we recall often, and especially today, that divine mercy is quite unlike human mercy, not only in its endurance, but in its quantity, and most especially in its quality. The image of the risen Christ that is so identified with this devotion is one that is inviting and warm and open and generous and compassionate and welcoming. Those are the qualities of divine mercy that should beckon us to seek the forgiveness that only Christ himself can offer. Far too many Catholics have been away from the sacrament of reconciliation for so long that the job of inviting them to return to sacramental forgiveness and mercy should concern the entire church. Perhaps Catholics have strayed from the sacrament because they have erroneously identified God's mercy with mere human forgiveness. They are unlike as two realities might ever be. St. Faustina Kowalska had revelations of images of the mercy of Christ, and she accepted the charge to make divine mercy widely known, well beyond her humble convent life. This tradition has grown especially in the United States of America, where today many churches here and throughout the world are observing this devotion of divine mercy in accepting the gift of divine mercy, however, all of us are charged, as was St. Faustina herself, to make that mercy known, and specifically in the way that we are merciful to others. As the Church brings the Easter octave to a close today, we listen to the story of Thomas the Apostle, the stubborn 
and hard to convince disciple whose initial absence from the disciples only gave occasion for him to express his disbelief. Thomas is us, obstinate, cynical, and too often arrogant. Yet the risen Christ is the very image of compassion to this recalcitrant follower of his. Thomas's stubbornness of heart and spirit is met with the understanding mercy of the risen Lord. Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. What more could Jesus do for this disciple of his who would not accept the word of the church that Christ had truly risen? Thomas was warmly and generously invited to accept the resurrection by a Lord who was filled with a mercy that confronted and then silenced Thomas's doubts. The risen Christ showed Thomas genuine divine mercy for his doubts and his hesitation to believe. And this same Christ longs to extend that mercy to all who just seek him. We are the disciples who must, through our own gentleness of spirit and mercy, invite those who, like Thomas, still harbor doubts. We invite them to come and to believe. For after all, God's mercy endures forever. And that's very fortunate for all of us.